What we're looking at tonight is a, a, a view of how to improve your work effectiveness in the knowledge that the improvement of, work, of your work effectiveness is not your sole responsibility. It's a shared responsibility. And how I want to progress on that is to make the point to you that effective practice is not automatic. It does not just happen by some kind of magic. It is thoughtful practice. It is reflective practice. And what I want to do is take you through some examples uh, which have been used in universities and in business of how reflective practice and effective performance have been uh, construed, how they operate in practice, and how that's linked to performance review. Because as we know, in this university, performance review is conducted uh, minimally on an annual basis. Uh, and if it comes up for promotion, it's slightly more frequently. So this is an important topic. It is not in the sense of tips for teachers or tips for what you can do uh, about improving how to do accounts or how to be a better secretary or whatever. It's not in that very um, uh, finite segment. It's more about an approach. And the approach which I want to um, suggest to you links into performance review, it links into appraisal, it looks into performance development, which is, in many institutions, uh, a regular feature. In this institution, I think it is not. In this institution, we have appraisal, but it's um, the, the relationship of appraisal to development is one which I, I haven't been able to spot so far in this, my time in this university. Whereas in other universities, it's linked very much to development. So as part of the appraisal and performance review, you identify what you need in discussion with a facilitator or a mentor or your appraiser. And the university has an obligation to address that. It's not just you do something about it. It's rather like saying, um, if I say to you, do something about it, it's like throwing you into the, the middle of a pond of mud and saying, lift yourself out. It's, it's not as simple as that. So what I want to do is to take you through some steps that have been used uh, frequently um, in looking at performance review and performance development. But to start with, uh, and the reason for this I hope will become clearer once we've done this, is just to go through uh, these eight questions. What I would like you to do, please, is first of all, to think about something that has gone really well for you at work recently. So it's concrete. Something that you've done really well at work recently that you feel very pleased about, very proud of. Then ask yourself why. And that's an important feature. Why did it go well? What have you learned about yourself as a consequence of experiencing that success? That's a positive experience. Then I want you to think of a, a real example, this is not just pretend, a real example of recently, as recently as you want it to be, where you've experienced or encountered a problem, or something has not worked well for you. You thought it would be okay, but it let you down. Something went wrong. Why? Why did it go wrong? What caused that? What were the main obstacles that actually caused it to go wrong? And as a consequence of experiencing that negative feeling, what has it told you about yourself? What has it told you about the work? Because effectiveness is not just um, a, a cognitive behaviour, it's actually a motive uh, aspect as well. It's an affective side as well. So again, what have you learned about yourself and about your work as a result of a negative experience? So let's start off with those two. Just take four or five minutes to address those first four or five questions. A positive experience, what has it told you about you? What have you learned 
That's the important thing. Learn means you didn't expect it. What has it told you about you? And from a negative experience, what has it told you about you? What have you learned about you? Maybe you're good at handling failure. Maybe you're good at handling negativity. Maybe you're good at handling stress or a problem or when things don't go according to plan. What has it told you about you? Okay, take a few minutes and just note down some points to work through those more refined questions. Off you go. Make it real. I'm really concerned with get yourself a concrete focus, something that went really well, something that went really not very well. And what has it told you? What have you learned about yourself? Okay, let's hold it there because I want to move on. Now, when we come to question six, it's saying, what have you learned about yourself in terms of positive things? How can you use what you've learned positively to overcome something that's negative? So question six is actually quite tricky, it's quite difficult. How can you use a positive feature of yourself to overcome or to try to overcome the negative feature? Try and work out your answer to number six. <coughs> how you can utilize your positive side to try to overcome the negative part. It may be that it didn't work, that you tried, but it didn't work. That's, that's an important finding. Now, when we get to questions seven and eight, well, let me put it this way. What you've done, first of all here, is you've identified something concrete, something real. Then you've thought about it. What can I draw from that? You analyze the situation. You've reflected on the situation in personal terms. Then, how can you work on the positives to overcome the negatives? That's question seven. Question seven and eight now take you to the next stage, which is like saying, well, so what? What can I do about it to try to, um, to build on what I've learned? What are my developmental needs? If I've identified a problem, how can I go about solving it? What needs to happen to me? Maybe I need more training. Maybe the university needs to do something for me. <coughs> Questions seven and eight are moving from analysis to reflection. Now they're moving to development. What can I plan now? for my development, what do I need for my development to be able to work more effectively on these kinds of issues. Try and work out, maybe just one or two points in response to questions seven and eight. What do I need to develop? What needs to develop in me? Maybe what training do I need? Maybe what support do I need? What do I need to do? What does the university need to do? What does my boss need to do so that I can really overcome one of the challenges that I've faced, one of the difficulties that I've had? Take a moment or two just to identify one or two concrete, real things, not just I need to try harder or the university needs to give me more training. That's too general. Something very specific, almost so that you can say, if it were to happen, I would know that it so it's evidence. Think to yourself, those of you who have been in the university for um, more than one year, that's more than one cycle of performance review and appraisal, and ask yourself if that process that you very quickly, in a very short time now, that process that you've gone through, whereby you take a concrete situation, you analyse it, you reflect on it, you learn something from it, as a consequence of that, you want to do something about it. So you plan for how to address that. Think to yourself, in your performance review or your appraisal, has that happened? Or has it been simply a question of, oh, tick, 
tick the boxes. Has your performance review actually encouraged you to really review? That doesn't mean just to think of something, it means to reflect on it. As a consequence of that, to, to plan what you want to do about it. And as a consequence of that, what the university needs to provide for you. You see, what you've got here in, in microcosm is some key features of effective performance and the development of effective performance. This is what you did. First of all, you identified a concrete situation, real, so it's evidence-based. It is not just uh, uh, somewhere up in the clouds thinking about it. It's, it's highly focused. Then you review it. You reflect on it. You think about it. Otherwise, it will not automatically correct itself or improve itself. Effective performance is thoughtful performance. Then you look at your strengths and you see how you can use your strengths to address some areas that are not so strong in you. This is not a matter of blame, it's just a matter of the real situation. Then, and it was interesting to hear John Paul's comment there, that will this be shared? Because that actually proves my point, that when you get to this level of trying to improve your performance, it's actually a very delicate personal matter. It's not just about something out there that's work. It's something with you. And when things go wrong, that's very challenging to people's self-esteem. So you've got to think about that emotional side, that affective side of you. How do you cope with when things aren't going very well? Do you talk to someone about it? Do you keep it bottled up? Do you share it with someone? Do you not share it with someone? So what we're saying is, if you're going to improve, actually it's got a personal dimension to it. It's not just about the content of your work, learning how to use Excel, learning how to use a Microsoft Access or whatever. But that, that's a, 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 if we look at the literature on performance development, that's a much more superficial view of performance development. And what they're talking about in performance development is uh, an openness to change, an openness to change yourself. Then we recognize, and maybe you've got this in your comments that you've written down, some of the solution to your problems and some of the development is not in your hands. It lies somewhere else. Maybe your boss needs to be a better communicator. Maybe you need more training and support in the university. Maybe there's got to be ongoing provision for you. It's not just residing within your own control. So questions that recognize that effectiveness is not dependent only on you, but on other people. They've got to give you the opportunities to develop. Ask yourself, is your boss or your line manager actually giving you the opportunities to flourish? Is, is your boss giving you added value? Or are you slotted into a job like a pigeon in a pigeonhole, and there you stay? with no development. The point that I'm making is that that review actually links to development. And in that development, it's a shared enterprise between you and the providers of your development. We focus on evidence. I ask you to look back. I ask you to learn. And then the last two questions were asking you to look forward prospectively, not just retrospectively. That starts to get you into a cycle of review and plan, review and plan, review and plan. Put the plan into practice. See how well it's gone. That means you can't just hope that it will happen. You've actually got to plan for an intervention to happen. Now, that intervention is not just your own responsibility. It's the university's responsibility. What we're talking about is planning, doing, reviewing. That review goes into the next cycle of plan, do, review. And that
that's what we've got on the slides. Look at what I put at the bottom of the slide that you have there. If you are going to be an effective practitioner, you need to think about what you're doing. Now, what I've tried to do in the next slide is just to um, unpack that, to say, if we're looking at effective performance, effective performance review, effective performance development, it's got to be based on a rationale. It's got to be principled behavior. And what I'm saying here is you, you've got to think about it. It's, it. it won't just happen automatically. It actually requires reflection. It must lead to action. Just, just thinking about it, it is like contemplating your navel, your belly button. It's very interesting, but it doesn't help you. So, so you need to then lead that into practice. I'm suggesting that performance and development are linked. Think about this university. Does this university link those two? Does it link performance and development? Or does it just expect performance? Think about the performance appraisal. Does it actually link those two? It involves planning and development and review to see, as a consequence of the development, has it made a difference? And here, where the university has an obligation, does the university help you to become a, a, a richer person in terms of your work, a more effective person? Point seven is an important one, because you've got to say, well, why should I? Why should I take the trouble to develop myself? Why should I take the trouble to come on a Monday night when I could be having dinner? But I've chosen to come here. What's the incentive and what's the reward? Apply that to this university. Is this university giving you sufficient incentives? Is the university giving you sufficient rewards? Not just financial, although financial is highly significant. I'm going to come back to point number seven. Uh, a little bit later this evening. Performance appraisal must be evidence-based. Now, um, last week and the week before, when we had the uh, teachers in the university uh, coming for the session, we were um, putting to them the benefits of keeping a teaching portfolio, like a dossier, uh, um, a file or a folder, of everything that you've done of significance during the year. So that when it comes to performance review or promotion or career development, you've got the evidence there. Maybe as administrative staff, or as well as academic staff, as administrative staff, that could be useful for you. A portfolio of your best moments or some kind of diary to report important stages in your work over the year so that you've got evidence, so that when it comes to a performance review, you can't just say, oh, I think I've done really well this year. Because my response to that is, Where, prove it. Where's your evidence? Similarly, if someone says to you, I don't think you've done very well this year, you say to them, where's the evidence? It's a two-way thing. It's dialogical. It's not a monologue. So it's evidence-based. You have to reflect on it, and as I've got here, it's dialogical. It's a shared responsibility. Now, that's all very well, having principles. How do those principles then translate into practice? Well, here are some examples. Uh, continuing professional development, CPD. And uh, this is taken from uh, the quality, not quality, I'm sure, quality improvement agency. And there's a few points I want to draw to your attention here. It starts at number one and it goes round. And you will see it's done what you did for the first 20 minutes here. You look back, you review, you thought about it, you analysed, you learned from it, then you said, so what, let me plan for my development. And indeed here, when we get to here, this is about keeping the record, the evidence base. But look what happens when we get to number six, which is the final review. 
doesn't stop, you go around the circle again. It, it's rather like a, a helix. It goes on and on and on. So you go through the cycle, but then the cycle doesn't stop. You continue, it's continuous improvement. And in that continuous improvement, you've got planning, you've got enacting, you've got reviewing, you've got then the next cycle of planning and so on. This is what we've got in the slide here. This is taken from um, uh, investors and people. These are people concerned with performance development, performance review. Look at what they've got. Plan, do, review. Plan, what are you going to do for development? It's not only your responsibility. What are you and the university going to do for your development? Then do it. Then see, well, how well have you met your targets, your goals? How well has it solved your development needs? And then, there's the key. Go around again. So you're constantly reviewing. And in fact, in many of the examples that I'm going to go through, you will see it's a cycle. And, and uh, that's not just accidental. It's quite deliberate to show that this process doesn't stop. It, it's an ongoing process. Now, if you look at the next slide, it takes those areas of plan, do, review. And it says, OK, let's put them into some development sequence. Now, this is, um, this is taken from a, a business side. But if you were to remove from uh, the slide the, the business words, I just put it in terms of your own development, you will see that these stages are actually quite important. That you have a strategy for your development, for your learning. It involves people, you and other people. It involves the leaders, maybe your appraisers, your supervisors, your line managers and so on, having a role in your development. It involves some kind of management of your development. So it's not just unplanned. It's a bit more methodical, a bit more systematic on that. Then the important one recognition and reward. Many people in this university work like dogs. They work very, very hard. The question is, do you feel you are suitably recognized, suitably rewarded for that? If the answer is no, it comes back to Hertzberg's hygiene factors. If the answer to that is no, then people will leave. Because even the basic foundation is not there. What incentives, what recognition, what reward is there? Not just financial, in terms of you as a person. How does it let you get more control over your own life, the empowerment part? Is it really empowering you? Or is it just fixing you at a certain rung in a ladder and there you remain? So we have learning and development. This then comes on to the review part. How well has your development addressed the areas that you wanted to develop? Because this planning part is about setting goals and targets. And then, as a consequence of the review, we go around again. Now, that's an unpacking of the previous slide. Look at what we got from the University of Melbourne. And they've got four main parts of their cycle that goes round and round. You plan. Consequence of the review, you plan what do you need to do next. That's what I ask you to do in your 20 minute, 25 minute exercise. What are you going to do about having identified a problem that you have? What does it mean for your development? Where do you need to go so that if that problem arises again, you know how to handle it? Then, as um, the next part of the, of the cycle, you talk to someone about it. A mentor, a supervisor, a facilitator, your appraiser. It's not just you on your own. 
And I think this university needs to, to recognise that a little bit more because the appraisal is something that is done to you rather than something with you. And it should be a shared exercise. And look at what we've got from Melbourne. It's two-way feedback. Does that happen in this university? Can you comment on your boss? Is there 360 degree appraisal? If only. You discuss your progress, you update your objectives, so it's an iterative process. But it's dialogical. The word is discussion. Then you review it. Then something happens as a consequence of the review. You don't just put the appraisal document away in a file and there it gathers dust forever and ever and makes no difference. It actually brings some significant consequences. Does that happen to you in this university? Are the rewards worth getting? Um, many years ago, I was doing a, a consultancy for a, I it was, a big company in the camp. And they said, oh, we have incentive schemes. We have reward schemes. Then when we, we talked to the employees, they said, yes, we've got reward schemes, but they're hopeless. You work like mad, and the reward is pathetic. It's not worth trying. Because the benefit that you get from all of the cost of your energy is not worth it. So if you're going to have rewards and incentives, make them worthwhile. Don't make them insulting. And then you go to the next round of performance to work with the review. Now, what we have here are four areas. Performance development planning. That involves you. You have to take the responsibility for planning. Where do you want to go next? What do you see as your next goals and targets? What development needs do you want to be addressed? You discuss them. You review your performance. And then something happens to recognize that performance be the performance, good, bad, or indifferent. Now, these four areas, uh, planning, discussion, development, review, and reward and recognition, in the, the following slides, each of those areas is addressed. So, for example, on your slide nine, this is the development planning part. Slides nine and ten deal with this. And it involves maybe some, uh, setting targets or goals, identifying success criteria. How will you know if you're getting better? How will you know if you have reached your target? My target is, by the end of this year, I will have tr been trained in blah, 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 blah. By the end of this year, I hope that I will have had the opportunity to do blah, 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 blah. Now, that's not just your responsibility, it's the university's responsibility. What are they going to do for you? And it should make a difference. Ask yourself, does the performance review and appraisal in this university actually make a difference? Does it help you to get promotion, for example, or is it simply a negative? It stops you from getting more money. It stops you from getting promoted. Is there a link between appraisal and reward? So you talk about your expectations, you set your objectives, and how you will know on the indicators whether those objectives have been achieved. And you need to put it into some kind of sequence and time frame. Otherwise, it, it, it's uh, too loose. It goes nowhere. It just wanders. Setting a definite time frame. So, by three months, I want to have done blah, 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 blah. By six months, I want to have done such and such. By nine months, such and such. So that you can really um, uh, stretch yourself. These are stretch goals, if you look at the business literature. You stretch yourself, but you've got an uh, evidence base for if you've reached those. And on this, what the, the next slide about development planning is suggesting is that 
your development plan is not just your plan. It's, it's a bit like a contract between you and your supervisor, you and your boss. This, this doesn't happen in this universe. But typically, um, if it's viewed in contractual terms, it means that both parties have an obligation. And not to fulfill that obligation is a breach of contract. It's rather like, for example, in my own field in education, um, if there are children with special educational needs, maybe they have learning difficulties, behavioural problems, maybe um, um, psychomotor difficulties or whatever, what happens then is the child or the child's parents or guardians then have a contract with the education services whereby the education services have a duty in the UK to legal duty to provide certain services. And the parents have to do their part. And if either party defaults on this, then there's a legal breach of contract. Now, we don't have that in, in this university. And maybe we don't want to make it. We don't want to make it as harsh as that. But there should be a sense of obligation for you to do something and for the uh, providing party to do something for you. It also means that there's got to be a proper opportunity for you to develop. Now, now, look at this for example. Look at tonight. Here's an opportunity for you, for you to learn about something to do with your work, about uh, performance development, performance <coughs> management. When have you got to do it? Outside your office hours. That sends a very clear signal. I was very upset about this because I had originally planned to put it into working time. I was overruled. It sends a message of how important the university values are. If it's serious about it, it will build it in as part of your work commitment and as part of the university's commitment to you. And, and to say, as was said to me, oh well, UMAC does it out of office hours. There's no argument at all. Set six to eight key objectives. Don't be over ambitious. Keep it small so it's achievable. Because if you achieve it, you will get a success. That is so important to feel success. That's why I asked you about the personal side in the first question. What have you learned about yourself? Success is a powerful motivator. And then we've got a range of other factors that feature in there, which I won't uh, develop at the moment. So we've got the performance development part. Then the second part of the cycle was the ongoing discussion. And here we've got the ongoing discussion, which is integral. It's not just something that maybe happens at once a year. Is it part of an ongoing dialogue? Now, in fact, in, in um, some of the academic departments, it's much more developed than in others, where there's a, um, a, I, don't, I don't want to use the word super, a more of a senior member of staff is discussing with the newer member of staff or the more junior member of staff about academic development, research development. How can I help you? How can we plan together? Now, on the administrative side of things, is that happening? Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, formal. It can be on an informal developmental basis. So, so for example, uh, the, the three people from uh, QA and Keith are here. Uh, our discussions typically are not formal. I don't want to say, right, we're going to talk about appraisal and performance review. But on an ongoing basis, we're talking about what's happening in the work. If it's too formal and too rigid, it becomes fossilized. On an informal basis, as long as it's working, then that's quite useful. But it's got to happen. It's got to be discussions. Are you getting support and development? Are you updating your objectives? Think back, for example. Let us say one year ago, you had done that exercise that you did at the beginning of this evening. And then you do it again tonight. Would you be writing the same things? If the answer to that is yes, then how much have you developed? 
maybe not much. It could be that you are being trapped by your work. That's why some people uh, move out of this universe and their culture. So you have to update your objectives, so part of the developmental process. Then you have the performance development review. And what I've got on the list there, I will not go through it, it's um, uh, too long to go through at the moment, is a whole range of things that you could focus on in looking back at this review. And it goes on about the discussion side of the formal review. Then we go on to rewards and recognition. And you will see on your slides that there are one, two, three, four, five slides about rewards and recognition. That is not um, unintentional. I've deliberately done that. Most of them I've taken from the University of Melbourne. But I'm trying to send a signal that you should expect recognition. You should expect rewards and incentives. It's very, very important. Now, I'm not going to go through all of those lists of um, rewards and incentives. The point that I'm making here is that is important. The question that you ask yourself is, is the university giving me that? Not, not necessarily tangible rewards. But, but intangible rewards. I mean, one of the rewards which I experienced in this university, you can't put a price on it. I work with delightful people. They're great, very, very nice people to work with. That's a reward. So there are some tangible rewards, financial, material. There are some intangible rewards. Now, it would be good if all of them were collected. I think the reward system in this university it is unclear. It really needs to develop. Okay, where do we go? So what we've done, we looked back using evidence, and you might want to store that evidence in some kind of documentary form, soft copy form. As I said, in the academic side, we suggest that they have a teaching portfolio. But that's not exclusive to academic stuff. Uh, in, in many organisations, they uh, ask their uh, staff, their administrative staff, to actually document some key points that have happened to them over the year. Ask yourself, have you done that? It might be simply a matter of updating your resume or updating your CV like training things that you attend, like particular skills that you feel you developed. If you put it into a separate portfolio, then it's constantly updated and it's very clear evidence. So you look back and you, you think about it. That's what William the Pooh's doing. Not very much success. Then you learn. That's what I asked you to do in the opening part of the evening. What have you learned about yourself? What have you learned about your work? That means you have to be introspective. R really think about it. Then, as a consequence of that, so what? What are my development needs? What am I looking forward to? And why I put this silly little picture of Winnie the Pooh and Piglet um, is there's two people involved here. It's you with somebody else. It's a shared responsibility in setting development planning, in setting development goal, in a realistic sense, so that you develop, so the university does something for you, and so that you know when you have achieved those goals. You identify the success criteria, the indicators. Now, that slide, which is your slide number 19, those three areas are then used for the remaining slides that you've got on the um, handouts. So we start by looking back, then we go to learning, then we're looking forward. 
Looking back, I'm not going to go through the exciting detail, uh, take them away and, and read them, but what you will see from the looking back is it's not just looking, it's thinking. Why did that go well? Why did I have a problem there? Where does the problem lie? Is it my problem? Is it my boss's problem? Is it the university's problem? Is it a resource matter? Is it a time matter? Is it a relationship matter? Is it that I didn't know enough? Is it that I actually need more understanding of what my job entails? So you need to really think about um, what has happened, why it has happened, and what you can learn from that, which is the next stage. What have you learned about yourself, your career plans, the work, the tasks, the roles? Now, these are just some uh, features that one sees in performance review. Now, you could ask yourself, how far is that addressed in the performance review in this university? That's a matter for uh, the university and for uh, you to decide. Of course, it's a two-way thing. Not only what has the university done for you, but what have you done for the university? Now, in, in most cases, um, it, it should be symmetrical. It should be a nice balance. Ask yourself if there is that balance in your work. The amount of work that you're putting in, your contribution to the university, are you getting sufficient benefit back? If it's asymmetric, that's one of the reasons why people will Really think what new skills, not just honing up existing skills, what new skills, what new competencies, what new knowledge have you got in the last year? Or are you simply rehearsing and repeating what you already knew before you came? That is, for example, with our uh, academic staff, that is quite a, a difficulty because they say, for example, in research, I don't have time to do research, so I'm basically rewriting parts of my PhD thesis. That's not new. Or they say the only thing I'm learning is how to deal with students with a bad attitude. Or how to deal with students that turn up in a very aggressive manner. Now, that's learning. Of course it's learning. Is it enough? So, look at your knowledge, skills, competences in terms of novelty, because that's where you're getting that value. If you're not getting that, that should go into your development plan. I need to learn about blah, 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 blah. List it off. And then here, this comes back to the issue of motivation. The best form of work, the best form of learning is motivated learning. How are you motivating yourself? How is the university motivating you? Or conversely, uh, switching you off? It's a shared enterprise. And in looking forward, what can be done to uh, really improve you, to develop you, what training do you need? It comes back to the plan, do, review, it comes back to the um, uh, setting goals and targets. It's a very simple uh, uh, cycle, really, in, in uh, the slides that we've got here. And then uh, that's taken forward into the last slide that we've got. So those last one, two, three, four, five slides are developing the Winnie the Pooh side. Just unpacking that. Now, what we've got here really is it's both a very simple message, but it's actually a very complex message. Improving your work effectiveness, improving your performance requires both parties. It requires you as the employee. It requires the university as the employer to work on and to work with evidence. So you've got to keep the evidence. 
It requires you to review. It requires you to plan. <coughs> it requires you to do something about it. It requires support and development. It requires opportunities to be given to you to actually expand your knowledge, your skills, your competencies. That's why, for example, in many workplaces, they have job rotation. So that people learn about different aspects of different jobs. It requires you not only to review, but it requires some kind of reward to be discussed. Some kind of incentives to incentivize your performance, to incentivize your development. Why should I bother? So, in a sense, my message is simple. I've just listed off a whole lot of things that need to be, to be done. The, the difficulty, and what makes it complex, is that that then has to be translated into practice. Now, all of that that I've said for the last half an hour should feature in your formal performance review, your appraisal in this university. The forms that you fill in, the discussions that you have with your appraiser, what you can do to progress, what you can do to improve, what the university can do for you to progress you, to improve you. It's a shared exercise. Now, when you next go through your appraisal or your performance review, see if the point that I've raised with you this evening actually feature on your appraisal or your performance. There may be a, a gap. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. The, the, these slides will be posted on the uh, web. Okay, thank you.